Hello and welcome to Flory Models Kit View Time. Today we've got Qatari's brand new first release of the Spitfire Mark 1A mid-production. Now, again, this is one of these things. I just want to get my disclaimers in. I've had loads about this particular kit, but I've deliberately not watched any reviews. Uh, I've seen a couple of photos online when it was in its sort of mid uh, final production stage and things like that, like most of us, but I haven't seen the kit. Now I'm fully aware because many of you have messaged me with, um, you know, pros, you know, it's a fantastic kit and how disappointing it is and all the rest of it. But I've deliberately not watched a single review out there or read a single review or even look at photos online until I actually got the kit. Now, I was quite vocal around about ooh, over six months ago now, uh, maybe nine months ago now, when I saw the initial pictures of this. And to be honest, I was incredibly disappointed. Uh, it was at a particular model show. I wasn't there live. I just saw photos of it from but what I saw. I wasn't giving it much positive review and stuff like that. I'm led to believe that it went off for retooling um, uh, after obviously some critique and criticism and stuff like that. So this is the final version of it so i'm going to go into this one in other words with completely open mind you know and we're going to reset everything i'm going to forget about what i've heard what people have said and this is going to be my review of this particular kit and mine alone without being influenced shall we say by other people because i think the trouble with the internet is that it's certain influential sites out of there if they say it's bad it then even if it's a good kit it will get a bad rap and it goes the other way as well they might say it's a good kit when it's a bad kit so good on sport Okay, so anyway, here we go. Right, first off the bat, we've got some beautiful box art down in here. Very, very nice, really nice, uh, simple lines of the Spitfire shown beautifully off there as well. And again, in very much an artistic way of showing it just like that, all right? So it is one thirty second scale, as you know. Let me grab some glasses so I can get a proper good look at this. Sorry. All right. So down here on the box, you can see we've got three versions in this particular kit. All right. So we've got one here from 54 Squadron in May 1940. We've got another one here from uh, 234 Squadron in August 1940. And we've got 610 Squadron as well from June, July 1940 as well. All right. So very nice like that. Obviously, lots of blurb, which I will leave you to go around and find these ones out. Again, pretty straightforward on this. This is their first ever kit release. So this is number uh, K3201, all right? And then obviously we've got the usual blurb on the other side and numbers. So in the box, first time looking in here, genuinely, all right, we can see, if I can stand to be on there, hold that up. We are greeted by some bags. And again, looking very nice. Standard type of, uh, you know, the actual frames I'm looking at and things like that, but looks very nice indeed. We've got the clear parts. So it looks like we've got there one piece, or obviously we've got the uh, open canopy as well, which is a nice touch. Usual sort of layout as well for the sprues being obviously one piece under wing and then top part on top. But I do notice some little clips in here and things like that. So that looks quite nice. All right, so we've got the fuselage section. And again, some of these areas, if you wait till the end of the review, I will talk about in a little bit more depth. But we'll have a good look at the kit first and then we'll give my thoughts on this really at the end of it but generally very nice formers all look nice and stuff like that again weighted wheels all of those looking good we've got a fantastic <laughs> very wing that wing-esque shall we say but uh, that's obvious all right and we've got a huge decal sheet as well which we'll have a good look at that in a moment as well so as always we'll start down in here in the old instruction so it looks very as you say wing that wing-esque and again we'll talk about this at the end of the show but obviously if you didn't realize uh the designers and a few of the people from there here have obviously come from the wing that wing stable uh before its demise all right so anyway as you can see down here nice good color call outs all the rest of it we've got Tam tamia Humbrol, and then we've obviously got the federal standard and British standard color codes down in here, which is a nice touch. We've got the parts, the various bits and pieces down here, and also it's pointing out A55 just down in here. And obviously some of these parts aren't used, and as we would expect, we are expecting other versions of this particular kit. I thought this was folded. That's very thick card-like uh, down in here. Again, as we were sort of somewhat expecting to say, because it does come from the Wingnut Wings history, shall we say, uh, we've got the various excellent 
color call out and obviously the actual placement of the parts and all the rest of it down in here as well really is in depth and we've got some nice reference photos down in here pointing out some of the detailed areas as you're making its way through so obviously we've got instrument panel going in there you can see all the bits down in like that and then obviously down in here we've got the actual floor system which is basically just your runners and your formers underneath your feet. Uh, and then obviously some barring across the top. And obviously we've got the runs that are going down for these bars that are pushing down off from the rudder pedals will be coming down the back of the fuselage, things like that. Speaking of rudder pedals, they're fitted on and then slotted into the interior. We've got the control stick again, or the, the actual uh, spade grip down in here as well. So that's all being fitted down into this one. And we even got the control rod running down to the elevators down here at the back all right usual thing down in here we've got some photo etch i assume somewhere have we got photo etch i don't know if that we have it i don't know if i look at this if it is plastic looks like it's plastic actually so again very bit, much bits down in here as well we've got the armor plating going down here at the back and then obviously making up the rest of the cockpit fitting in the formers with the seats and everything in there talking about that somewhat down in here opening up these holes obviously these are lightning for the weight holes down in there to open those up as well all right on the lower side and then down in here again opening up some holes keeping it all nice and light down in here the rest of the formwork behind the cockpit down to where the oxygen goes and all the rest of it down in here at the back all right so all of those being fitted down into this one and again really nice detailed shot showing you how the harnesses come up and then going to the fixing point at the rear right the way through then you can add a little bit of your own work to this so again it's talking about the different sizes We've got 0.15 mil uh piping going down in here back to the control surfaces if you did want to run them the entire length and then obviously to the rear all right again more great color call outs all the way through down in here for the actual internals and again nicely detailed for your painting guides and pulling out all those details as well just down in there like that all right, then we've got the side walls going on. And again, some more cabling being added if you want to add those down in there. And again, down in here, you've got more color callouts down in here with some more information about the parts, where they're going, where they're situated, things like that. Again, if you're having the door open, you're taking off a little bit of the trim off the sides of it, just so obviously you can show it with the open with the door or with it closed on the side door and all the parts being fitted down into this one. All right. So again, we've got the prop shaft coming right the way from the back to the front as well. So interesting way of doing that. All right, so that's very nice with all of those parts down in there. Then, as we're expecting, obviously, other versions of Spitfires coming out and stuff like that. So some of the top parts are going to be sort of separate bits. And then, again, opening up various tabs, bits and pieces all the way through in here, adding more detail for the wiring coming through, that engine, the top cowling going on there. And then, again, depending if you're having it open or closed, we've actually got the actual uh, side door as well going on there. And then down to the elevators at the back. All right, so we can do some of those so if you want to have them positioned or not you've got a little tab which you can actually remove as well all right so really nice down in there huge big wing spark which is really nice for alignment and things like that could be running right the way through and then again wheel wells again a little bit of housework down in those areas depending if you're having them uh, up and down various bits all right all of those being fitted down into this one and then the actual barrel system is quite a little bit crude if you like but we've got this one down in here so you've got a little bit of a jig system going down in here to align all of those up all right so that's with those in there wing tops going down on the top then we've got these little fillets going down the sides and again that's what that wing slot is then there's a slot which this little tab will fit into hopefully ensuring you get a really nice wing join with no gaps and it won't be stepped or anything else like that to which they're prone all right radiator systems going down here in the bottom so fitting those all in there just like that and again some nice detailed photos showing the positions you should have those put in the under cowling uh, down in here for, for the actual uh, coolant system on the bottom being fitted down in there just like that all right and again some nice little reference photos telling you about how that's all going to fit in gear being fitted down into this one as well so again nice big plated gear so you should have your alignments really nice but if not you've got notes down in here showing the angles it should be with it pitching in slightly and again some nice reference photos all the way over then we've obviously got the prop being fitted onto this one we've actually got the exhaust being fitted onto this one and again it's talking about opening up the ends of them all right which is a nice touch and then again we've got the little undercarriage indicator flags which pop up just down in there as well all right so pretty much straightforward and last up we've got the canopy fit being fitted down onto this one obviously doors open and close depending on which way you want to do it and remember kids don't paint anything red on the inside of the door 
All right, rigging wise, obviously quite simple aerial setup, pretty much off from the actual fuselage up to the pole and down to the tail. And again, some nice little points pointing all of those out. Decal placement, as you can see, right the way down in here. And again, almost straightforward on those. And then again, some nice detail and nice color call outs down in here of actually each one you're doing as we were talking about earlier for these particular markings. And again, beautifully researched right the way through for all of these, as you can see. All right, some very, very nice touches, especially obviously pictures of the real thing underneath showing you the Jekyll placement and obviously the trestle marks, things like that down here on the underside. And again, reference photos galore. So again, really, really nice all the way through on that one and again very nice instructions so can't fault the instructions they are absolutely beautiful so straight over to here let's have a quick look at the decals uh see who's doing these all right so designed and printed in italy so i'm imagining that these are probably uh, sorry, designed and printed, designed in New Zealand and obviously printed in Italy. So I'm assuming these are cartograph. Looking at the quality of them, I'm pretty sure they're cartograph, but it's not saying it. All right. But if we have a good look, you can see beautiful, solid colours. I know the camera hates doing this on close up mode, but you can see carrier film is pretty much to an absolute minimum. But as you can see, they're really very very nice all the way through we've got the tape as well covering up the gun ports as well so you said you can have them open then you've got separate ones on top for the fillets going over the front of those as well and again we've got all the walkways down in here and this one is the only little bit of a bugbear sticking all the instruments in one by one or sometimes in pairs and threes into that instrument panel but again once it's done be really nice it drop a pba glue on top and you'll be good to go but they are really stunning decals to be honest with you Okay, so let's get into the meat of it. Let's start with the fuselage because obviously we all want to get to the detailed bits. All right, so down in here we are greeted by the plastic. It sounds hard. It's not soft plastic injection mold. I think Hasegawa. Um, and again, so it's got a nice, good hard finish the great thing about when it's obviously a harder styrene down in here you get finer details and they stick absolutely beautiful first thing that jumps out to me is that we've got a mix of raised and obviously recessed details right the way over these the fuselage halves themselves you've got all the sort of raised domed rivets where you would have them and then obviously we've got the flush uh recessed ones in there as well well they're not recessed but you know what i mean they're just flush but they are showing so really nice attention to detail on that one again very very nice all the way through all right so again the recess stuff is very very finely done beautifully done i would say actually and then obviously the raised stuff is incredibly sharp so that's absolutely lovely all right so we have a proper look so you can get a gauge of this as well you can see how to be honest down in here how fine this panel lining in is probably some of the finest i've seen in this scale the riveting work again i have to give kudos this is definitely the finest nicest riveting detail i've seen they are all perfect absolutely perfect all the way through but i just love this this sort of you know blending of raised and recessed you've got the flushed one sort of in here so you've got that sort of slightly recessed um you know with actually flush rivets down in there that's very nice control surfaces again you can almost see the fabric with the actual stitching work down into these rear ones. Again, very, very nice indeed. Again, engine wise, as we'll speak about shortly, there isn't one, but again, you've got a nice blanking plate just down in here that forms up to give it a nice solid feel. Side cowlings, again, we've got the correct uh, little slots uh, for the little donut areas for the actual turn screws. I can't remember their things though, they're called Zenith something or other. But they are all very very nicely done so it's not just like holes or domes or how other people do it underside down in here again we've got a beautiful mixture of raised you can hear it and recessed and it's got a really really nice look to it actually like that and again down in here so we've got the runners and the former areas down here on the floor for the cockpit we've got the fuel tank filler on the top here which obviously comes in to be part of the gun sight on the inside so that's going to be really nice a really nice good sharp recessed in there as well so hopefully the bits will fit in and again down in here we've actually got the actual tails very nice internally wise 
Again, weirdly, the ejector pins are really heavy and quite meaty, and they're quite gnarly all over this. You can probably see up here how they are. None of them are going to affect, but they're quite agricultural. We have got some in here, but that's basically you're never going to see any of these. And all the areas where you are going to see, so obviously down in here, if you've got a microscope on a bendy stick, um, you will see those areas, and there's no ejector pins in there. So again, a lot of thought's been given to where those are actually going to fit and how they're going to house. Again, all the markings down in here, it's got down in here for the Mark 1 5. So hopefully we'll see the 5 coming along very nicely. Last up, this is that big old wing spark running right the way through. You're not going to see it, but from an alignment point of view, it does make a lot of sense. All right, so that's very nice indeed. Okay, so next up, let's take a look at the wings. Now, I know a lot has been said about the wings. Um, and again, this is one of these areas, now I'm looking at it, it sort of makes sense. So just to put the record straight on this, don't forget that the actual wing system on the Spitfires is very much like the Mustang. They are puttied over and then obviously they're painted on top and all the rest of it. So you're not going to see riveting like you would see normally on the Tamiya Spitfire, for instance, because the reality is it doesn't have it. Now, from an aesthetics point of view, it looking nice. Yes, having all the rivets looks beautiful and it shows it off and all the rest of it. The reality is it wouldn't have it. So again, this is one of those ones where you're going to go with what you think it should look like or what it really looks like. And obviously down in here, they've done it where it really looks like this all the way through. So again, some really very nice touches down in here. So if we start over here on this wing, as you can see, it is as it would be. The only thing physically you've got standing on the top here is all the access ones. So we've got the accesses for the guns, and obviously we've got the actual inspection ports down in here. And down in here, which is obviously only molded in the one, this is the flap, um, you know, actual door as well. So the flap comes up for that one when the uh, flaps are in the droop position. Small hole here is obviously for the little flag that pokes up to say that the gear is down. So again, really nice. But again, little areas. I don't know how well you're, if you can even see it, but it has got riveting like, down this edge. And this is raised, as is the real thing. So that's very, very nice. So this is raised along this one. The rest of them, they're all puttied away and they are gone. All right. So again, that seems to be just about right from what I'm saying, seeing. All right. Under here is the same type of story as well. So again, it would have been puttied up. Obviously, aerodynamics are everything. And again, the same thing is going on down in here, but we still got some little bit just around these two ones down in here. We've got a few little raised ones, the rest of them all just recessed as they would normally be. And then we come down in here and just down on the back here, we've got raised rivets running down in here that are all domed. Underneath here, they are all flush. And this little guy is running down in here, which are these semi-flush ones down here, are absolutely beautifully done. I have to say that is absolutely gorgeous. And then again, really very, very nice. And again, just down on this tiny back edge, probably hear it, we've got raised rivets, as it would be. If they're going to be there after you joined it together, I'm not sure. And again, on these fillets, we've got some really nice recessed details just down in those. Very, very nice. Again, nice touches down here, just about see the, uh, the actual control column. Very nice. So yes, and then down in here, this is the guns. So don't get too excited, but I'm sure the aftermarket people will be all over this. So yeah. So and again, this is talking about that this is the Mark 1A, the Mark 2A, and the Mark 5A just down in here as well. So we are expecting perhaps to have the other versions coming along, which would be absolutely fantastic. On the inside, again, not that you're going to see most of it, but all the framework and formers are all in position. Now they haven't sunk through or anything gnarly like that. So we're absolutely happy with those, all right? And again, it does look like that the actual flaps are just in the molded up position, which makes sense then because of the door down here at the back being molded closed. So there is no option to drop the flaps on this one. So you can't have the flaps down, but don't forget Spitfire, unless it's actually uh, landing, doesn't have the flaps down anyway. As soon as they're powered up, they all get sucked up. But again, lots of ejector pins right the way up until they're going to be in the way and then they stop. So there's no problem with ejector pins down in there. And again, this is quite nice. It's almost, you can't see it through here, but it's almost like a little bit of stress skin effect. You can see it, but it's not evident. I think by the time you put primer, it's going to go. It's a real shame that 
in some ways we often talk about sync marks being a pain but if they just sunk just a tiny bit that would have been absolutely fantastic for that but again the mold is far too good but generally very nice indeed okay last of the big splurge we are learning here so as you can see down in here this is sprue a we've got everything going on down in here all right so really really nice obviously we've got a small no it's okay actually i thought there's a dent in the end of the prop but it's all good we've got the exhaust we've got all the various bits down in here we've got weighted wheels generally very very nice indeed all the small parts as you can see these are those formers running down the back on the cockpit i'll see where the parts go on again these are holes need to be opened up all the way around here some of them are open but i think this is a tooling issue to get it in that small again some of them it looks like they're almost there but they're not quite because they don't go all the way through and that explains why is because the former doesn't continue like this they just go all right so that's those generally though prop looks very very nice no problem at all those exhausts the spinner weighted wheels the wheel wells again very nicely done and then we've got the radiator we've got the doors sort of open and close positions and again they both look really nice even the open one down in here we've got the little lip over the armor plating to the rear of the seat is very nice as well generally i have to say i'm very impressed it looks very nice very sharp okay last up we've got for the main sprues We've got a couple of different ones down in here. So we've got another prop over here. So just making sure which one you're doing. All right. And then again, we've got the various bits down in here. So the harnesses are molded in with or without. So again, nice touch with this one. You can see you've got the seat without or with, and these are molded in, which is really weird and very, very thin and really, really nice, cleverly done. Smart little design that. All right. Instrument panels we spoke about before. Obviously, you've got to put all the dials in. Or you might want to go off to market down that little route again really nice again nice little highlight with this one is these sides the details just down in here as you can see really very nice very sharp again it's all raised and recessed pretty much as it would be right the way through again very very nice indeed okay last up the all important clear parts Okay, those look particularly really very nice. I can't see a single flaw in that. There's no centre seam, there's no nothing. The one piece looks absolutely gorgeous. And again, the real one looks nice. I must admit, you can't fault those. Those are absolutely beautifully done. Very, very nice. They are absolutely crystal clear. Beautifully done. No problem with that at all. There you have it. That's the good news. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay, so my initial first thoughts are it is an absolutely beautiful kit. That is absolutely stunning. I have to say, it's got some details on this that has absolutely blown me away. For instance, this riveting, raised riveting in 30 second scale, I think that's the finest that I've ever seen on this one. It is very, very nice. More importantly though, the flush rivets, the way that they sit, it looks absolutely spot on. Um, you know, and you probably know, I might have mentioned it, but I was um, last week playing with the Lancaster all day and I was up really close to it personally. Um, and looking around at it from a modeling point of view, I'm looking at rivets. I'm looking at plush rivets as well and the various bits and pieces right the way over it. And looking at the wing of a Lancaster looks like these sort of plush rivets. They've got that small depression in there. Like a, It's a bit like you've done a filler job and it's sunk. You know, it's the same principles that are going on here. Those look absolutely fantastic. They're just below the surface as they would be. And then again, the actual surface rivets look absolutely spot on to it. There's some really, really nice touches with this particular kit that I like. You know, again, the way that the surface detail is, is one thing, but the internals as well is fantastic. But, and here comes a couple of little critiques to this. One, we don't get an engine. And when you're talking over a hundred pounds and in some cases up to 140 pounds for a 30 second scale kit that doesn't come with an engine it's a lot of money for what we've technically got here is a Ravel Spitfire so I built the Ravel Spitfire which is what 40 quid and um, it's very nice it's not a patch on this 
that doesn't come with an engine. I wouldn't expect it to come with an engine for that money at all. But again, for when you're paying the amount of money you're paying for this, I would expect an engine. It's a real, real shame it doesn't. Because I think if this had an engine, it would be worth every single penny from this particular kit. But unfortunately, it doesn't. Again, little things to this kit as well, like a mask set. As silly as it sounds, for the sake of a five quid mask set, I think it, again, would just give you that option. Let's face it, new manufacturers coming down the line now, Hobby Boss, for instance, and Trumpeter, are tending to put in mask sets in with it. It seems to be almost the norm way to do it. And I think what I'm getting at here is that we've got here definitely the finest Mark 1 Spitfire there is uh, to date on the market, but it needs a couple of little things to go along with this one. And I think if this thing did have it, it would make it a super kit. We're just at that cusp now of obviously price. You have to take into account that this kit is you know, 110 pounds, and we're, we're doing it for at PM's 110, but it's usually around about 120 quid, things like that for this particular kit. You're expecting as a modeler to be given a certain amount of value for money and all the rest of it. But with all of that said, my final thing is, is Qatari here are a brand new manufacturer. They've got to make money. They've invested clearly a hell of a lot of time into this. They've included a hell of a lot of money and now finally they're reaping the rewards and trying to get some money back in. So hopefully they can develop these models and bring them out. And then obviously we're gonna have a nice line of kits as just as good as this through the, their entire range. And to be able to do that, they're gonna to have to charge top money for it because this is not a rebel kit. It's not a 40 quid kit. This isn't even, you know, a you know, 100 quid kit. It is definitely going to be over 100 quid for this particular kit, but you are going to get it. If you're a modeler and you're into the details, this kit has got it in absolute buckets right the way over for it, you know. But again, you have got options out there. If you don't want to pay 140 quid, go and build the Rebel one. I've built it. It's a lovely kit. It goes together fine, no problem at all. I've got built three videos. Go and watch those. If you want something a little bit more, obviously you're looking probably at the Tamiya ones. The Tamiya ones are not, as a lot of people have put it on there, the be-all and end-all, the pinnacle of modelling. They've got faults. They've got recessed details on the wings, for Christ's sake. It doesn't have it in real life. But again, it's one of those ones where, you know, if it's what takes your eye, you like it to have that level of detail in the various bits and pieces, you'll be very happy with it. This kit is definitely the most accurate kit, and you are paying for that accuracy down in here. And also, right the way through to the manual. The manual, I have to say, is again, it's a real pleasure to build when you've got a manual of this quality. And we're not talking a couple of bits of paper stapled together. This is proper, beautiful instructions all the way through. The research and attention to detail that's gone into this kit makes it second to none. And I know we're going to compare this to actually Wingnut Wings, and we shouldn't. You shouldn't compare this to a Wingnut Wings kit. Yes, the designers come from that Wingnut Wings stable and they're taking all of their knowledge from doing that job and now have moved it into their own one, being over here with Qatari. And it's good because they're taking the best parts of Wingnut Wings and then putting probably more of their own stamp into it and things like that. One of the best things about a Wingnut Wing kit was the instructions, without doubt. And these do not disappoint. These are on a par, if not surpassed anything from a Wingnut Wings instruction. So again, the level of attention and detail to the instructions is just on a par exactly of what it is down in here with the actual plastic itself. And that is a sign of a really good company who are dedicated to their product. And I have to say, I will eat humble pie. I take it all back. I absolutely love this kit. It's a little bit expensive. I can't get away from that one. And it is just that thing. It's quite basic kit, shall we say, as an overall package for a hundred odd quid. If it was 95 pounds, I think I'd be a lot more happy. It's just that anything over a hundred quid, I'm expecting engines, mast sets, and photo etch, and all the good things that go with it. This doesn't, but it is almost right there. And from my point of view, it's close enough, so I'm going to say this is an absolute must if you're a Spitfire nut, or if you just love your attention to detail right the way through, you're going to love building this kit. I can only hope, and I'm assured it does, go together as good as it looks, and that will make it pretty much a beautiful build all the way through. So there we go. That is the hugely anticipated... I put a downer on it nine months ago. I completely take it all back. It's a wonderful kit. One thirty second scale Qatari Spitfire Mark 1A. Thank <laughs> you.